עד כה עולם הפוך ולונדוניסטן, היא מבקרת בחריפות רבה את האידיאולוגיה המערבית הנכנעת ללחצי האסלאם. מלאני פיליפס היא בעלת טור בעיתון הבריטי הנפוץ דיילי מייל וכן באתר המגזין ספקטייטור בבריטניה. היא מבקרת את השנאה הרווחת בחוגים רבים בבריטניה כלפי ישראל. היא יוצאת גם נגד ההסברה הישראלית, אותה היא מכנה בדיחה. בעת האחרונה היא השתתפה בכינוס על התקשורת במרכז האוניברסיטאי אריאל. פתולוגיה, כך היא מכנה מלאני פיליפס את כניעת האידיאולוגיה הרווחת במערב ואת השקרים המופצים על ישראל. הנה מה שאמרה לנו בשיחה באולפן זה, הנה. I call it a pathology, uh, not lightly, uh, by, and by pathology I mean it's a kind of madness, by which I mean this, that the people who are in the grip of this delusional uh, uh, perspective through which they view Israel and the Middle East are simply impervious to reason. They're impervious to evidence. They are impervious to facts. You bring along facts on the ground, and they say, no, it's not true. You tell them the history of the Middle East, they say, no, it's not true. Um, now, that's not true of everybody. There is a very large number of people, in my view, in Britain, who are not impervious to reason at all. They're entirely rational. But unfortunately, the discourse they hear day after day, week after week, from the media, from the intelligentsia, from politicians across, uh, across the political spectrum, from the universities, from their teachers in the universities, all tells one story. Um, it's a story which turns truth and lies, uh, justice and injustice, victim and victimizer in the Middle East on their heads. But the problem is this, there is no alternative discourse that they hear. There is virtually no media outlet that tells the truth about the Middle East. Are you saying, Ms. Phillips, that Israel is defenseless? Israel has made itself defenseless over made the years. Made itself? Yes. There is a serious problem, as I've just described, among the Western intelligentsia, among the British media political class. But Israel has contributed to this problem in great measure because Israel has been absent from this process. Israel could have changed this if it had understood over these many years that this has been going on, that it is not just fighting on a military battleground, but it's fighting on what I've called in my writing the battleground of the mind. Israel has ignored that. Israel has taken the view, we don't care about Britain, Britain's lost anyway, Europe's lost anyway, we have America. We have other things to do. Uh, we have many more things to concern us, and we are not in the business of having to defend ourselves and our existence. Well, unfortunately, they have vacated the battleground to the other side. What about what we call in Israel, in Hebrew, Israeli Hasbara? Israeli Hasbara is a joke. Joke? An absolute joke. Israel is completely outclassed and outmaneuvered on a battleground it doesn't even understand it is on. It doesn't even have the basics of proper Hasbara. It is simply nowhere. The Arabs, the Palestinians, the Muslims have organized for years. They've put money and thought and intelligence and shrewdness behind this. They understand that the way they could win against Israel may not be a military route. They've been frustrated in that over the years, as we all know. They've understood very well there's a weakness in Britain uh, which they could exploit, that they could mount a kind of psychological warfare by which they would do two things. They would, by colonizing the battleground of the mind for their lies and propaganda, they would do two things. They would recruit millions of fanatics to their cause who would literally be prepared to die for that cause, having been brainwashed into these lies, which tell them that Israel or the Jews are about to destroy them, they're about to destroy the Islamic world, and so on. And at the same time, they could bamboozle the West, because they understood very well that the Western intelligentsia is signed up to a way of looking at the world which is, I would call, ideological. It's to do with ideas, and long ago, it lost the idea, it lost the belief in truth, that there was such a thing as truth. If, for example, you say to people in Britain, you know, um, uh, the Jews are the only uh, people for whom the land of Israel was ever their national homeland, 
um, they look at you as if you're crazy. They have no idea. They have been told that the land of Israel was the homeland of Palestinian Muslims since time immemorial. They have no idea that historically this is absolute garbage. No one's told them. No one tells them this. They have absolutely no idea of the legal commitments entered into by Britain and the international community after the First World War, which said that on account of their unique claim to this land, the Jews should be settled throughout Palestine. And you're talking about the intellectual community, about the press, about the theater world, the arts. I'm talking about the, the universities. I'm certainly talking about all those people. And you know, you have this here in, in Israel. I'm absolutely astounded to find so many of your luminaries in the universities who themselves have no idea of Jewish history, Israel history, Middle East history, who have themselves been taught a whole load of rubbish um, and are teaching the young in Israel uh, that Israel was basically born in sin. Quite a lot of the animosity in the British high-class media is fed by organizations such as Haaretz, newspaper. Um, it's coming out to a certain extent from Israeli academics. This cuts the ground from under the feet of those who tell the truth. Yes, but there is a the freedom truth. of the press in Israel, freedom of expression. Everybody can express that's, its own views, I'm, including Haaretz. That's absolutely fine. The problem has been that the government of Israel over many years has not understood that that is the only story being told. Freedom of the press, fine. Let Haaretz say whatever it wants to say. But somebody should be putting the truth into the public domain. And the government of Israel has not done this for many years. I mean, freedom of the press, freedom of speech, absolutely. We Let's have more of it. Let's have the freedom of speech used so that people are made aware of the lies being told. Because unless people are made aware of that, how on earth are they supposed to know? Maybe the idea of a Palestinian state, this is the solution. Maybe this will solve the problem. Well, it's being advocated even by Mr. Netanyahu, the Prime Minister. Of course it would solve the problem in the abstract, but the fact is this terrible war has been conducted over the two-state proposal. In other words, the two-state solution has been on offer, as I said earlier, from the 1930s onwards. It cannot be the solution. Every time it's been offered, there is more war. It is quite obvious. If you offer, it, it, how can it possibly be still considered to be the solution? If it only it were the solution, I would wish it to happen. Who could possibly f object to this idyllic scenario? It could work so well. State of Israel, State of Palestine. Living side living by side. Living side by side, economic cooperation. You can see a great future for both countries together. Fine. But this is to ignore the reality that this has been on offer since the 1930s. The other side, the Arab side, doesn't want it. It wants Israel gone. It says so. It shows it by every word and deed and has done consistently for nine decades. Miss Melanie Phillips, how many intellectual journalists in Britain share your views? There are intellectuals uh, who think like this, but they tend to be scorned and abused and vilified as the right, right wing, that all purpose, nonsensical, infantile insult, which is designed to shut down argument. There is nothing remotely right wing about standing up for truth against lies justice against injustice, freedom against those who would snuff out freedom and human life. Nothing right-wing about that at all, but this is the label hung around the necks of people like myself. And believe me, it has a very chilling effect on people because you can lose your professional livelihood, your chances of promotion, you lose your friends. It's not something that people will willingly embrace. Miss Melanie Phillips, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.